On a planet called Origin, in the great Ochardental Desert, there lives a giant like no other. Well, really like no other around today. The west portion of the Ochardent after the Relic Sea used to be its own island continent, where life was actually more closely related to that on the Orient. When it connected with the east part to make the continent we know today, a lot of the life there couldn't compete with the dragons on the other side and quickly died out. While a few small-bodied lineages have survived to the modern day, only one large-bodied one did. Order Kyclopia. While only one species is alive today, we can find plenty in the fossil record up to only a few thousand years ago. They're characterized by the giant hole in the middle of their skull that in life holds their psychic eye. Before I talk about anything else, I'll talk about the living species known as a cyclops, what it does, and what the heck a psychic eye is. Not many animals can survive the intense temperatures in the relic desert, but the cyclops does fine. It's evolved the ability to sweat all over its body and lost most of its hair to allow the evaporation to cool as efficiently as possible. Its relatively large ears are filled with blood vessels for a similar purpose of cooling down the animal, as well as its strange mouth and tail. It's a smart animal that's a candidate for receiving the rights of personhood, and some were trained in ancient times to protect Tanyan, a nationality of dragons, from outside forces. More about that in my Speculative Anthropology Sapient Dragons video. Cyclops have a psychic eye, an extension of their brain that controls their trunk and probably does other weird psychic stuff. Their trunk is really cool, it's selectively tangible, meaning the cyclops can decide what passes through the trunk, at least to a degree. Something like an arrow might always pass through, but the cyclops can basically avoid a shot to its trunk by making it intangible. It can also choose which parts of the trunk are tangible, so in the heat of day it can leave the highest part intangible, so air can flow through its mouth and allow for a bit of cooling down. While it's chewing or drinking though, it can keep the trunk tangible so it doesn't spill anything. The bright magenta that highlights its body shifts to red when the animal's emotions are high, blue when energy is low, and it fades to white as the animal ages or dies. Kyclopia evolved from smaller herbivores that had manipulatable snouts to uproot plants. They had a weak psychic organ that evolved from the hearing centers in their brain to sense where the largest edible underground plants were. There were no large herbivores in the island at the time, and these small herbivores were lucky enough to have descendants to fill that niche. As they got bigger, they had more options on things to eat, and their psychic organ became more of a way to sense predators. They evolved tusks to fight back against these predators, and their extended snouts give them an upper hand, not just for finding food, but for manipulating opponents. While it's not completely understood how the trunk became controllable in such a way under the psychic organ, it might have to do with how it was used in combat. There's no doubt that their evolution was heavily influenced by combat as these are highly aggressive animals that can be no other way if they want to survive in today's Ochidin. They live in the same habitat as dragons such as the Knot Bird in the north of the desert, Namwen in the east, Griho Guzaluko in the south, and Arangan in the west. Yeah, despite technically living in the same desert, each of those animals were named by distant groups of people. Oddly, none of those are Midwest Tanya names from the middle of the desert, though they do have their own unique names for each. The reason we don't use those names around the world probably has to do with how secluded the people of the Tombstone Relic are. Anyway, that's getting into the territory of a video I've already made, which you should check out. Speculative Anthropology. It's cool. Also, check out my Patreon, which you can subscribe to for a dollar a month to support me and get your name at the end of my videos. Thanks Captain Kobop, Art of Dying, and Mr. Kill. School is starting again soon, it's my senior year of college. You'd think that means I have even less time to make videos, but I actually did a lot of my script work during lectures, so depending on how it goes, we might get back to on time longer videos. Only time will tell. Thanks for staying with me for all of this, and thanks for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your week.